What's going on guys? Welcome to the video. Today we are playing yet another Yorion deck. I know. Filthy. Uh, but this time it's going to be a Bant version with splashing in some colors for some extra spells that we'll get to later. Um, this, all, this again brings Charming Prince uh, into as an anti-aggro tool and also to cause extra value with Yorion because he can start looping it every turn. Fae of Wishes, also another good anti-aggro card, and uh, if the game goes on longer, you can use Granted to get stuff from the sideboard for like an anti-control card. Omen of the Sea, Standard Crisis, it, for if games go long, you're going to be ramping up a lot of mana with this deck, so it's going to be nice to have something to pour that mana into. Deputy of Detention, good anti-aggro and control card. Knight of Autumn, good anti-aggro, good control. Euro, uh, it's good for ramp and anti-aggro because of the gain life. And if games go long, it can become a win condition by playing it from the graveyard. Omen of the Sun, standard enchantment for Yorion. Teferi, most broken card in standard right now, so why not? Archon of Sun's Grace, in order to get some extra value from the enchantments that we play. Also, good anti-aggro card, and uh, is a win condition. Mythos of Aluna, really good flexible control card that can be used in a myriad of situations to either push your advantage or wrestle control from the opponent by copying another Elspeth Conqueror's Death or, or Knight of Autumn or something that can interfere with their game plan. We are going to be running uh, three Elspeth Conqueror's Death and then a couple experimental cards I'm using in this kind of strategy are Cavalier of Thorns and Golos. Both ETB ramp spells that can be used with Yorion to just keep generating more and more mana. Even though this deck is 80 cards, it, the way the, the rate at which we go through this deck is kind of absurd. Um, in the sideboard, uh, I should really actually stick in a Jace just in case. Let's see what do we take out? Uh, Thought Erasure doesn't seem like to be the best one, so let's go ahead and put in a Jace into the sideboard uh, as insurance for in case we deck ourselves. Or, at a certain point, if the game goes long enough, we can actually turn our strategy into winning with Jace, another alternate win condition. Anyway, enough about the deck. Um, actually, one more thing is that I am experimenting with the mana base of this deck a little bit by using these triomes as a way to splash colors in. And with Golos and Cavalier Thorns, it should be pretty easy to get those colors out. So we have cards like Eerie Ultimatum and Ruinous Ultimatum as another alternate win condition. And a, a couple of our triomes will give us black mana so that we can ca cast Thought Distortion against a, a control mirror. We have Tamiyo for extra recursion, once in future for extra recursion. Grafter's Cage against Cat decks and other Euro decks. A very interesting deck. Um, hopefully we can get some good games with it. And showcase the power level of this particular deck. Much better hand, I'd say. Up against Yorion. Looks like turn one Fable Passage for blue. Or white, yeah. For white, then turn two Triome into either Deputy or Deferi, depending on what we need. Let's go ahead and get that planes out. And triome go. Turn two, they are unlikely to play anything substantial, so it looks like we're going to be playing Tef into an open board. Uh, I actually like the Knight of Autumn aggro play better, so it forces them to play an answer to this. Let's 
glass casket is okay. Now the question is, do we deputy detention the glass casket or Teferi bounce the glass casket? Because I think we Teferi bounce to get our land drop. We'll try and get our land drop. That's really the most important thing right now. And then we can gain four life from the nine bottom. It doesn't make sense putting counters on it if he's going to just glass casket it again. Let's see, we want two white more than we want two blue at the moment. But we will want to have two blue soon so that we can cast Mythos of Aluna if necessary. Interesting. Are we looking at some sort of blue-white combo control? Maybe another Charming Prince Thassa mill kind of strategy. Second blue is nice Don't worry. for Mythos. So what do we do in this situation? I think we try and fetch something from the sideboard. What can ECD hit? ECD can hit Yorion, but I already have one in hand. They're, they might be playing cheaper stuff for Yorion. Um, I'm going to get a Heliod's Intervention preemptively in case they start playing more artifacts and enchantments. Okay, okay. Oh, no. we can L ECD that. Here we go. And they won't be able to counter it because of Teferi. Okay, so is there a play that we could make that keeps Tef on the board and gets rid of their Teferi? Because we don't want to open them up for counter spells. I know they're going to start going hard for them so that they can get them off the board so they can counter spell. Deputy of Detention looker really nice right here. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll protect you. Only time will tell. And then we can Heliod's intervention at instant speed if we need to to destroy their glass casket, which gives us an added item, which we can destroy another artifact or enchantment. Okay, we have ECD for that. That's a good ECD target. And then if they keep playing more things that ECD will be useful for, we can just copy it with Mythos or return it to our hand with Tef. I've got you. Let's go ahead and exile this Thassa and say go. Deputy of Detention by Tef. That That's okay, because we can Mythos our ECD to kill the Deputy. You're my favorite Deputy. Unless he decides to kill the ECD. Then I can't copy it, obviously. Okay, so it's looking like he's wanting to Yorion. Hmm. 
Thassa. Hmm. And glass casket so that it would take my deputy. Which means I really do want to kill that glass casket this turn. But I also want to kill deputy of detention. If I send glass casket back to their hand, they won't be able to play casket and Yorion to be able to get that shenanigans going. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. To the deputy. Trust me. You'll thank me later. Turn casket. Oh, I've done the hero Krasis is nice. Um, I want to gain four more life. That might come useful later. And then we'll play the Fae of Wishes too. Now we have two black for thought distortion. Is that a line we want to go for? Okay, what are you going to do with that, Tef? Interesting. So, we're going to get nothing back with ECD, unfortunately. Um, we have another Tef. We can get back our deputy. I or return Knight of Autumn to the hand. Destroy the glass casket. And then deputy to the Tef again. I think we want a Heliods for one. And then we can play Uro. Hardly my worst defeat. Wait, that was a mistake. I should have killed the Tef with the Fae of Wishes. And then we could use Deputy for something else. At instant speed with Heliods intervention. So that would have been a much better play. Now we have three black. Another Thassa. Another Tiberi. I kind of hope they return. Here we okay, go. never mind. They didn't return my fave wishes to my hand. Okay, what does Krasis do here? Two, four, six, seven. I've got it. Returning Deputy to my hand, and then playing it again. Gets rid of a Tef. Or do I just go Krasis? Let's put him underneath bounce range and then do crisis. Now he has to sacrifice his Teft in order to bounce. Don't make another move. Crisis for seven. Let's 
let's see things that could annoy us another glass casket on the crisis would be annoying still don't have a good Yorion for them do they have banishing light do they have another ECD what does the opponent do here respectable I appreciate them trying this kind of stuff out though. Or what's effective and what isn't. Thos is an interesting blink card, but I don't think it has a place in a Yorion deck. In my own personal opinion. Okay, so I think we actually just go like this and then return our Fae of Wishes to our hands in response to them blocking. position we do what I'm almost certain they have counter spells should we just resign our Teft to death I don't think so we can crisis for five no, I am not making this up as I go they have the, enough to tap a creature anyway. I think we're probably going to lose our Tef. So we need to make sure that we have something as a backup. We can cast Eerie Ultimatum. Do we get Thought Distortion? No, let's just go for Eerie Ultimatum. Yorion usually doesn't play counter spells. So I don't think we have to worry about it. But you never know. Blue White Yorion has a lot more room for counter spells, probably. Another crisis in hand, too. Gonna tap it down so I can't block and I will lose the tap. We will meet again. Good thing is that I can play Tef and Eerie Ultimatum. Pretty sure. Yeah. Two, three, two, three, five, six, seven. I need three white. So now if they counter this, then I'm just going to cast the Eerie Ultimatum. So they might as well counter this. 
That's fine. Now I cast Eerie Ultimatum. Get back literally everything. Stand by and watch. ECD the Yorion. Put counters on Knight of Autumn, I suppose. Another ECD. Let's go ahead and get more blue. Return Thassa. And we should have this game in the bag now. Gonna be very hard to lose from this point onward. Garbage, no big deal. Especially since we have another ECD in hand. Okay, we're gonna use the ECD on the Thassa then. Should we should we copy their Thassa? Just for the lulls? Copy their Thassa and then destroy it. Or, yeah, let's just do Archons. Might be a bad idea. We can also, we can copy it and destroy it. Yeah. Too much value for us. Okay, this looks like a pretty good opening hand, especially for against aggro, which it looks like we are since they've picked Luris as their companion. I'm not sure what the use is for picking Luris as a companion at this point, but no, we'll take it. Looks to be like some sort of filthy sacrifice deck. Fun. Let's start gaining life quickly so that we can counteract their little damage over time effects. The more life we gain, the better this game will be. Okay, I expected as much, but good thing we have Fae of Wishes as backup. Oh, I'm, I'm really stupid sometimes. No oh boy, no. I can't believe I just did that. Well, two Fae of Wishes for blocking is going to be pretty good. Let's go ahead and play one Fae of Wishes, one Charming Prince. Hopefully we can get a land drop next turn so we can play a 3-3 Krasis or a Golos. I think Golos is better so we can do 4-4 Krasis the following turn. Man, they just really hate Charming Prince. Oh my goodness. Let's see, do we take 8? Take 6? Yeah, let's just go ahead and sack this fate of wishes to the gods. A tap land, not the most ideal. Let's go ahead and try another fate of wishes. We can live one more turn, but will it be enough? We're 
gonna take eight guaranteed. Go to four. Gain two life if we do crisis. So to go to six, we'll have two blockers up. This is as good as done. What are some things we can do to counter this style of play? Deputy Detention would have been nice. Well. It's still gonna, we're still gonna lose anyway, even if we play it. Would have been nice to have it sooner. Okay, pretty decent opening hand. They go first, but I think we can make this work. Oh no, I'm only looking to six. Usually good sign for us. They are playing mono red. Very fun. This deck isn't really built for if they go wide. I should probably put some sweepers in here. Cool, more land. Thanks, game. I guess our only plan here is to try and slow them down as much as possible. Life gain from the prince is nice, but we really need more answers to stuff like Annex and Torbran. This is part of my worst defeat. Guess my opening hand wasn't super good against aggro. I should have known. I should have I should have played better. We're we're already dead. But you never know. We'll go ahead and play this one out. Cause next 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 turn we still won't be able to get a Cavalier of Thorns. 